Congratulations. Thank you. Exciting uh, to get a win for us here in Omaha for our program. Um, these three men were sitting next to me were major contributors uh, in the ball game for sure. Uh, the beginning and the end with the pitching I thought was uh, really good. Trace Bright, I think I, I gained more respect for him today than ever. thought he was one hitter away. I don't know if he knows that, but one hitter away of coming out in the third inning. Uh, but he weathered the storm. We really were scouting report interested. Can our fastball survive? And really, their first two runs come, come off of uh, a breaking balls that I, I can't see from the side, but maybe grabbed a little more plate or not our best breaking balls, how they got their first two runs. And one just barely hit the chalk. It, down the third baseline, and he held it together and come back out with his fastball in the third inning and, and got us all the way through the fifth. Left a runner at third to finish his outing. Uh, Sheehan gave us an inning. I'm a pitching guy, so I always think how important that is. And then with two outs in the seventh, and they're at their three hole, you know, my job is to get Berkey in the game. Uh, got out of that, and then we were able to get to four, five, and six as he needed to be pitching against them there in the eighth. And then we were able to get through the ninth inning there. And then uh, my favorite offensive inning was the fifth inning. Uh, I think Brody got a ground ball to the six hole. We finally just got to get to a hit and run approach, scrapping our at bats. We had had five, three, two counts that we lost them. Um, I know we had an eight pitch at bat by Rambush to start off the game. And then just the full counts, we couldn't win. And then we, I'm just tired of watching us sit there having at bat. So we did some goofy stuff. We bunted a ball too hard for the first out. We did a first and third, and we delayed too much from leaving it third. And I thought I, it made me happy. It was goofy baseball, but we scored four runs the very next inning because it just seems like we got each other's attention. I was watching Oklahoma last night, and they make the first and the third out at third base, and everybody's throwing throwing trash at them. And I'm like, that's they're right where they need to be. They're playing, they're attacking, and they're going for it. And I thought that helped us work into creating the sixth inning. And then uh, Cole Foster had a big hit for us and uh, has been struggling just, just health-wise to stay on the field and was a big, big hit for us. But uh, uh, thankful to get a win and look forward to competing again tomorrow. OK, we'll start off with questions for the student athletes. If you have a question, raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. Uh, start here with Aaron and then we'll get. Thank you. Aaron Fit, D1 Baseball. Trace, uh, what, what do you think were the key adjustments that you were able to make you know, after that what, second, third inning to kind of find your groove and, and get, get deep into the ball game? Location, that was the biggest thing. Um, they were aggressive, so being able to flip it off speed in there behind in the count was huge for me. Um, we knew that they were aggressive going in, but you know they jumped on some first pitches and made me pay for it. But um, you know I think I got my command later in the first a little bit and then better in the third more so. So that was the biggest thing for me. OK. So, so far this postseason, you name, guys name have, affiliation, oh, please. sorry, that's my fault. I'm Andrew Stefaniak, AuburnDaily.com. And you all have sent three Pac-12 teams home this postseason throughout the regional, super regional, and here in Omaha. How does that feel to represent your conference this well and to play baseball against one of the top um, conferences and beat them? Uh, why don't you start, Cason? Uh, um, you know, anytime we can uh, play good teams, um, we want to represent the SEC well. Obviously, uh, all Pac-12 teams we played, I respect them. They have really good players. Um, but, uh, you know, being from the Southeastern Conference, having four uh, Western Division teams in here, uh, we just want to play good baseball and, and uh, try to represent our conference well. And it, it obviously it feels good to, to uh, win against such great teams like Stanford and Oregon State and UCLA. Um, all have great programs, all have great players. Um, we're just trying to represent the conference well. OK, here in the back, Mark. Mitch Kutcher, CWS 247. Blake and Trace, what kind of effect has Tim Hudson had on the pitching staff? Uh, I mean, he's been awesome. He actually helped me pick up, pick up my cutter. Uh, and he's work. I mean, he'll work with anybody if you ask him. He's always uh, he's always looking to help. And you know, after every inning, I come in the dugout and I'll go over there and talk to him first thing. I'll be like, he'll ask what's working, you know, what's not working. Uh, and then right before I get back out, I'm like, what do you think I should do to these guys? Like, who do I have coming up? Uh, how should I pitch these guys? How should I work around them? Uh, are there anybody like any places I need to be worried about? And I mean, with a mind like that in the dugout, you you've got to take advantage of it. So. I would say that he's um, 
with that much experience, there's a ton of knowledge. And, you know, trying to pick his brain all the time at practice, you know, even when you're not pitching about things, how he sees things, that's big for me. So I try and, you know, get little tidbits of information that may help me that I can apply to my game. Okay, back here. Brian Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. For Trace, you hear your coach, you know, ups and downs of this game with your backs up against the wall. When you saw Cole make that play, what was that going through your head at that moment? You know, he's been great all year. Um, you know, big swing today for us. You know, he was fighting the heat, which was amazing for him to finish that game. All nine innings was, was big for him. Um, but, you know, I know that the offense was about to heat up at some point, and I know that they had our back. And then, you know, Tommy and Berkey coming in after me, I knew that they had the game right where they wanted it. And in their hands, I was happy with them finishing the game. Okay, here. Adam Cole, the Opelika Auburn News. A question for Blake. Um, I know Butch had kind of talked about it a little bit earlier in the season, kind of getting you back to, to top form since that, that injury uh, during the Tennessee series. You've looked probably as best as you have all year from Supers till now. Just wanted to ask if there was maybe a point recently where you felt like you've, you've gotten to that top form and just, uh, I guess, what's been working best for you uh, since the Supers? <clears throat> Honestly, it's all starting to just click at the right time. Like, uh, I can't really, like, put a finger on where, like, what exactly part of my game is uh, is getting better. But I, I know, like, my focus when I come in the game, I'm, I'm there first through nine innings, ready to go. Uh, just the mental aspect that's uh, that's been locked since, since uh, like, postseason plays come around and then everything's starting to click on the mound, so. Okay, Jason. Jason Caldwell, Auburn 247. Cason, just you touched on, on Cole's swing, but how, how big is that for an offense to have one of those breakthrough swings in a game like this, You know, especially the way that y'all guys have been in the last couple of games swinging the bat? You know, it's huge. Uh, like Coach Thompson said, we, we lost a lot of 3-2 counts. Um, you know, we were battling, and obviously offensively, we, we haven't been where we want to be the last uh, two or three games. But um, for Cole to really uh, put a spark in our offense, um, and I mean, you could tell just everyone's at bats. We just kind of we, we're a little bit more on the attack after Cole's big swing. Um, I hope that can carry momentum into uh, this week into tomorrow when we uh, compete against whoever we're playing. But um, it, that swing meant a lot, and Cole came up in a big moment. And you know, he he's been huge for us all year. But that really put a spark in our offense today. Okay, we have a question on Zoom right now. Please give your name and affiliation and ask your question. Yes, Mark Murphy inside the Auburn Tigers. This is for Trace. What does it mean to you to get the start today, um, considering you had such a rough outing out in Corvallis? And uh, I guess you got to feel great about the way you pitched. Yeah, you want to bounce back. You know, that was a tough outing for me, um, you know, but I, I, I endured that whole game. My offense had my back that first game, and, you know, we pulled it out. Um, but you try and learn from it and move on. Um, but I wanted to get us off on the right foot, and I kind of had us behind the eight ball there for a few innings. But, you know, like Kaysen said, once the offense got rolling, you know, I knew that we were in a good place with the bullpen set up and how we were with that lead. Okay, right here. TomGreenale.com. For, for any of you guys, uh, I think on the broadcast, we all saw that little bird in the dugout. Uh, can you guys tell us, you know, what happened there and when, when, you, when you guys first saw it? They were playing, so I was over there front row seats with the bird. Somehow it might have managed to find its way in our dugout. Um, maybe a little rally bird or something, but, um, you know, it seemed to work for us. Okay, Mike, this would be our last question for the players. Uh, Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald. Blake, can you uh, just talk about that first batter you faced in the seventh inning and, and coming in with the bases loaded like that? Uh, when I was coming in, you kind of try to, I mean, you know the bases are loaded, but you kind of have to flush it. I mean, your all your main focus is that first guy out uh, out of the pen. That's what we focus on as a bullpen. And coming in there and being able to uh, command some pitches, I, I mean, I don't think I had my fastball command all day. But uh, the cutter was working and the changeup was working, and that's what I had to lean on. And I got, what, three, I think it was a 3-2 count or something. I mean, I was... Right on the brink of walking in, but uh, thankfully I got that strike out and got us off the field. Okay, guys, thank you. A reminder that the locker room is closed, and uh, George will help you with any other requests you might have. So you're excused. Trace, that was the scrawniest war eagle I've ever seen. <laughs>
<laughs> where am I at? I don't even see these things. I didn't even know there was a bird. Yeah, where, what am, You're where busy. Am I? I don't know what I Thank am, but you. I didn't see a bird. Thank you. Okay, questions for Butch, and we'll start right back here. Butch, when you heard your players... Uh, Name and affiliation. Oh, sorry. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. When you heard your players say... You, you were kind of explaining that you had to get creative in the fifth and the sixth. That kind of they went on attack mode. Is that what you need to hear? Come Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now, yeah, we're just at a stage. You know, that was. I think we traveled a bunch. You know, <laughs> five thousand miles and who turn quick turnaround for us. And I just, I just wanted to get our feet back underneath us. But more importantly, I, I want us to. Man, if you leave here, I, my job is to keep a, a group of players and coaches to leave with no regrets. Just let it let it hang out. What are we going to do? Screw something up or make a mistake? And I just I want them to attack as much as they can. I think Dan Gable. I said it attack three times. He wouldn't say it once. Dan Gable would go attack, attack, attack. And I just I want them to go out that way. And it's not always going to be perfect, but I just don't want to sit there for nine innings and us just have it bats and and uh, so that's why I'm trying to make a deal out of that. I kind of asked for it. So anything that looks dumb, it's always my fault anyway. So I might as well go ahead and call it out and, and uh, get them stirred up a little bit. And I, I do. I think the fifth inning led to a chance in the sixth. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yep. But Brian Stoltz, Auburn Rivals. Um, how big is it after 2019 getting that win and not going home to a barbecue, like you said, and how big is that momentum going to carry over into the next game? Yeah, I don't know what carries over to the next game, but absolutely um, our program winning a game here is not just getting here, but but winning a game against an amazing team. Dave, who I think about Marquist all those years growing up, what an amazing program. Just a chance to compete against them. I've embraced every one of these teams that we've got to play because I just I respect the game. I care about the game so much. It, it even gets me in trouble sometimes, but I just I, I care about our sport, and I think it's at one of the best places it's ever been. And just an opportunity to get to compete against that program is a box that I get to check personally, but our team is another sense of accomplishment for our program. So it's not just a win. It's important for us as we continue to try to build ours and build, the, build a brand of respectability sincere respectability with our with our program so it is a big deal and it gives us a chance to compete again i don't i don't know i our word today was surrender and i'm sitting in my hotel last night and i'm like all right y'all telling me only four teams out of you know four teams out of the last 40 years have lost that first game and won a national championship who is it and then i looked and i was like okay well pat casey did it in six and 18 and tanner did it in 10. how about i call them tonight since I'm sitting here. And both of those men got back and they both gave me paragraphs of taking me through the journey with their team. And I'm like, I just, I, like, like I say, man, the, the man or woman or the team that will never quit, you know, they got a chance. And I just want us to fight and I want us to attack. And that's all you can ask for. I, I don't, the, the score will take care of itself. But those men, it was like they were excited to hear from me and they're like, yeah, this is what we did. This is what we talked about. This became our focus. And I'm just hunting for every inch we can for our program. So thankful for today and excited about tomorrow. OK, Mike. Mike LaPresse, the NCAA.com. In the sixth inning, you got one guy who takes a foul off his shin and looks pretty painful. And he stays in there. You've got a guy who, by all accounts, is looking like he feels really lousy and gets a big hit. Can you just talk about the sheer grit that was on display in that inning? And how bad does he feel? Yeah, he doesn't feel great. You know, he would, shouldn't he be in here? He got three RBIs and two hits. He should be in here right now. So you can imagine he's probably getting IVs is what I was was told because he should be sitting here at the table visiting with us right now. So he's he's doing all that he can. I, I, like he barely pulled into second and, <laughs> and he dropped his head, probably the biggest hit of his life, and he's trying to keep his head up. So uh, he, he's just done an amazing job. I think back to game one now, you know, that's, people really pile on people when you don't swing it offensively. You know, just team looks lethargic when you're not getting hit sometime. But I got, I got little Bello trying to run through the left field wall. He's trying to fight with a fan. He's diving on the line. I got Brody took a bite out of the tarp. I, I just, from a coaching, if you get, I'm always want to be level two, not like on my couch at level one. I know they're fighting. 
for. Sometimes it just doesn't always look as pretty or clean or uh, the execution, because this is what this is all down to. You are, whenever you have success here, or, or you're, you're playing somebody that's the best of the best of the best. Uh, every one of these teams had to climb a mountain. Everybody's hot enough. Everybody's good enough. So, uh, but th these guys are giving us all they got. And I love my team. Okay, Adam. Uh, Butch, Adam Cole, Opelika Auburn News. Um, I just kind of wanted to ask about you guys, you know, really roughed up their their best pitcher who's been dominant for them all year. And I know you only got so much time to game plan, but it was curious how much of the game planning maybe went into going up against Quinn Matthews. And I guess the success in that frame was wondering, too, if it was a, a blend of the bats finally breaking through or you guys maybe having a having a plan for going up against him. Yeah, I think we finally just exhaled. It's really neat how the players, their perspective, when, when Cole hit the ball, that – that was a big exhale for our offense. But like I say, that fifth inning, just starting it up, trying to do a little bit, I just think that got us wanting to go a little bit. And we knew we'd see him. We've been watching video of him. I mean, that's their guy. And um, thankfully, we got in there that early. You know, it's hot out there. And I, I looked up at the board one time. He's at 56 pitches, and he's an amazing pitcher. And then they brought in a lefty there to finish a game that was 95. <laughs> it was pretty good, too. Uh, so, you know, all in all, we knew if we had any chance of winning today, we were going to have to deal with him. And uh, I, I thought we did a pretty good job. And, you know, we brought Burkhalter into the seventh there. I really – come on, Sheehan, we got two outs and nobody on. We got a, a hit that, you know, we just defensive replaced there. And that was the one place the park today where that ball was traveling was the left center field. And uh, we took a little flat route, and then you couldn't catch up on it late. We hit a batter, and then another single sharply. Uh, so we, like I said, when you're right at that part of that lineup, we had to go ahead and dump our guy in. But we got Burkhalter in there a little bit later, and he had a lead. So, uh, but but Matthews is a is a really good player. We really didn't know what kind of starting pitcher we would get. I think they've moved around a little bit with their two hole guys, and we just tried to take the two or three best guys and started preparing for them. And uh, Matthews is absolutely one that we watched a lot of video and tried to talk about what we have to do against him. Okay, Jason, this will be our last question for Butch. Jason, uh, Auburn 247, Butch, you're, you're a pitching guy at heart. What's it mean for you to see an outing like that, not only from Trace, but to have a pitching outing like that in, in that big of a moment? Yeah, just uh, I looked at it. I, you know, we struck out 13 the other night. We struck out 16 batters today. I had no idea. And Trace, they hit him. They He made a couple of breaking balls, but they he, he just – he steadied himself and he went to another level in the third. I just – I'm – that's a developmental piece where I'm proud of him. But, you know, at the end of the day, he was going to make Stanford beat him. And he finally settled in the ball game. He had eight strikeouts and no walks. Berkey had five strikeouts and no walks. And, you know, he got hit in the butt with a line drive there. But he's only walked seven guys. He does have the ability, whatever you think skill level is, a Burkhalter, he can at least shove it in the strike zone. And when you can do that, the tenets of the baseball game usually work out. So we get out of there with one walk and I think one hit batter against a really good offensive club, and, and that gave us a chance. It's just like when I was bragging on the, tipping my hat the best I could to Ole Miss the other night. There was just no walks. They just did not help our offense any. We got a little more help today, and then we had a couple of big hits, uh, you know, Foster and – and really, they handled. I thought they pitched Shunny tremendous. They, they would go up in the zone, off the plate. He had a really good at bat, but it was a fly ball to right. There wasn't much happening to right today. And Pierce and Foster had a couple of big hits for us today. Butch, thank you.